Uh, first of all, like I thank you so much for like for joining me to have this conversation. It's really I've been following your journey like you know uh, about a year ago, and I think uh, I started this conversation in order to like just talk with people that really inspired me and to look at you know look at their journey and 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 what you know what inspired them to you know what they are doing today. So um, uh, my first question is I want you to introduce yourself, you know, so that. Uh, uh, more people who doesn't know you would actually get to know who you are uh, before the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. Mm. Um, these conversations are always fun, especially in the time of COVID where yeah. we get together in person. So, you know, it's Zoom calls all day. Yeah. Um, but hi, everyone. I'm Brittany Johnson. I'm a creative strategist, content creator, and art director. I live in New York City. Yeah, that's wow, <laughs> that's that's amazing. That that's really amazing. Like, and I think a lot of people want to do good. You know, a lot of people want to do amazing things, but they don't know how to do it. Uh, why? You know, why do you think that? You know, it's really very important uh, for people to be so creative when when actually they are getting into like you know the the creative industry. Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so as I like to position it as a child of an immigrant mm -hmm. uh, or an immigrant yourself, I find that sometimes we think of creative jobs as like the last possible option or something that doesn't necessarily lead to success um, because we have been conditioned to believe that success means becoming a mm -hmm. lawyer or a doctor. Mm -hmm. um, however, Creativity is so important and there's so many different creative roles that you can actually succeed in. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I actually went down the wrong path of doing what I thought was going to make my immigrant parents proud uh, and was unhappy doing that. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until then that I realized, oh, wait, this like need for creativity and my love and passion for creativity is mm -hmm. actually what's going to make me happy. And I'm not going to be successful unless I pursue that. Um, so, I mean, I can go through my story, but yeah. essentially I went to Florida State University, graduated with an advertising degree, and I landed an advertising internship at Wyden and Kennedy. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're familiar with Wyden and Kennedy, essentially like the best ad agency in the world, mm -hmm. um, the founder, Dan Wyden, coined Nike's slogan, just do it. And they are most known for doing the work with Nike and Old Spice and like these huge, really creative brands. So, so I moved to Portland, Oregon for the summer, was totally out of my comfort zone. And I was doing media planning, which is mm -hmm. essentially when you buy and sell the placements of the ads. Uh, so very numbers heavy, very like Microsoft Excel heavy. Mm -hmm. And as a creative person, I was just like dying inside, right? <laughs> um, so I started taking my lunch breaks. I started asking all the creative directors to mm -hmm. get coffee and asking them how they got to where they were. And one thing that kept coming up was portfolio school, which is something I hadn't necessarily heard about before. Mm -hmm. uh, so I started doing some research and learned about it. It's essentially a two year program where you study a specific creative discipline. Mm -hmm. So I chose art direction. Um, so I essentially turned on a full-time offer to do media planning, to go back wow. to school, uh, study art direction for two years. And after that, like so many opportunities opened up that I didn't know were possible. So yeah, basically to answer your question, there are so many different creative roles that you can actually succeed in. Mm -hmm. um, and if you just expose yourself to different creative careers and people who are creative, you can learn more about them. I mean, you, you really mentioned something really very important. And I, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine yesterday. And uh, you, you mentioned something about like, you know, something that you love and something that you're passionate about. And I was telling him that, you know, we're living in a, in a generation where, you know, doing what you love matters a lot. And uh, why do you think that, you know, why do you think that it's really very important for people to actually invest in what they love? So... Okay. I think it's important for people to do what they love. I think this generation mm -hmm. now is more, this generation is focused on doing what they love more than ever before, yeah. because for the first time, 
in history, there's more young entrepreneurs like yourself, people are building their personal brand Mm -hmm. rather than staying with one company for like 30 years and then retiring with them. Right. So I think people are also seeing, um, people are also just, just, there's so much more opportunity to learn new things. Like you Mm -hmm. can go on YouTube right now and take like a 12 week course and learn a whole new skill. (laughs) And I think people are realizing that if you not doing, if you don't love what you're doing, you're going to mm-hmm. get burned out very quickly. Um, and it's not, it's not going to be sustainable over a long period of time yeah. versus mm-hmm. when you do something you love, you can like put all your energy into it and you feel fulfilled. Like yeah, in exactly. portfolio school, mm-hmm. we would, we would literally like not sleep, like stay up all night crafting <laughs> stuff. Mm-hmm. And even though I was like so tired, I still felt so energized because I was doing what I love. Um, so I think it's really important to do what you love to sustain the work and actually mm-hmm. build something that's meaningful and purposeful. How do you sustain what you love then? Because I think it's, it's really very important that you're passionate about it. And then we live in a in the environment right now where everything, you know, you got to pay this, you got to pay this. And then, you know, and then you have that passion about like, you know, this is what I love, but I'm not getting, you know, what, what I want from it. So how do you actually, I'm going to rephrase the question. How, you know, I say like, how do you sustain it? But how do you then, you know, balance the two together in, in order for you to achieve, you know, to achieve what you want to do? Yeah. That, I mean, that's a really good question, right? Like, yeah something you could love something could be your hobby but it's not bringing in any money yeah. um so i think you just have to be smart financially and sort of mm-hmm. map out like okay this is what's th- i'm gonna do this because mm-hmm. i'm getting paid from this um but it still connects to my passion and purpose and then over here i'm gonna do this because it brings me joy and i'm giving back to the world but i might not be getting paid from it and i feel like if you have that mm-hmm. balance um you'll have a happy life. Like it's, it's funny. I started, um, I posted this video recently on Instagram Mm -hmm. where I was creating some art and a few people reached out to me like, Oh, I want to buy a piece of art. I want to do this. Um, I want to, you know, Mm -hmm. how can I get a piece of art? And a part of me was like, Oh, it'd be really cool to monetize this. But then the other part of me was like, I'm doing this because I genuinely love it. And once you start to do something out of monetization and mm-hmm. almost you lose a little bit of the like passion and love. I guess it mm-hmm. depends on what it is, but I create art because it brings me joy, mm-hmm. not because I'm making money from it. Oh, wow. But, and then now that, that takes me to the, the, the next question. Like how do you, how, why is sustainability very important? Especially like, you know, for content creators, because I know that this is a very huge industry right now. Everybody, everybody wants to create content. So, yeah. and then like, how do you like have this mindset of like, you know, yes, I want to sustain it. I want, I, I want it to keep going. How, how do you do that? You know, <laughs> I think it's about like, mm. you can't, you can't pour from an empty cup. Right. Okay. So for yeah. me, mm. creating art actually like refuels me and inspires me so that I'm able to put more stuff out. Um, wow. Because if you're just constantly like, putting out stuff, putting out stuff, putting out stuff, you kind of lose some of that inspiration and you're not like filling yourself up with things that bring you joy. So then you're not going to like create amazing content. I think sometimes content creators, Mm. you know, I don't know if if you have ever felt this way, but personally, sometimes I feel like you have to constantly be creating a bunch of content. You have Mm -hmm. to post every day, like, to come up with new ideas like there's this feeling of constantly having to put stuff out mm. but i think it's really important to find that balance where you're also refueling yourself as well and finding those things that bring you joy whether it's you know working out or mm. going outside for a walk or spending time with friends and family or mm. creating art whatever it is you have to find that creative outlet that's going to refuel you as well. Why is the journey very important then in when, when you're creating the content? Because I know you have to start, you know, uh, gradually and grow that way. Why is that journey really very important? The journey of refueling yourself? Yeah. That's a good question. Um, there, you know, as a creative, mm. 
you the ideas you come up with are fragments of different things that you've come across in your life wow. right like no one is just like randomly coming up with a brand mm -hmm. new idea mm -hmm. your ideas are usually like pieces of different things that inspire you so if you're not getting that inspiration then you're not going to put out great stuff wow where, where do you get your inspiration from <laughs> So I get my inspiration from, I love culture yeah. and I wow. love mm. different cultures. Like my family's Jamaican. Mm -hmm. uh, so I love indulging in like Jamaican culture, mm -hmm. um, Jamaican, old school Jamaican movies, like dance hall queen, like stuff like that. I love that kind of stuff. Um, in 2019, I went to the continent for the first time. So I spent oh, wow. time in mm -hmm. Ghana and just like soaked up that culture. So I, I love learning about different cultures Um, and the different traditions that they have, like that mm. inspires me creatively. Mm. Um, I love seeing, I sometimes I'll just scroll on social media and like look at how, how creative people are and oh, like how they're mm -hmm. coming up with new ideas. Um, fashion inspires me, traveling inspires me. So I think it's just like putting all those different pieces together yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. to create something that feels like authentic to me. Well, I'm glad that you actually mentioned about the culture because like that, that has been like I've been in the U.S. like for like a few years, like three years now since I came from uh, from Uganda. I'm originally from South Sudan. But then when I grew up in Uganda, I grew up in a community where like almost everybody does the same thing. The culture is the same. So when I came to America, it was like different thing for me, you know, and, and there, there is that there is that, you know, different way I felt like, you know, wow, like even when I was in a refugee camp, I had a better life because there was that culture, there's that community that was together. And, and, and that alone, you know, it's, it's, it's a different thing. You know, that's why it's really very important for us. You know, it's good for us to explore, to see things that are outside, things that we can be able to learn and they can actually help us improve ourselves as people. You know, like I always tell people that the world is not flat, you know, like there is, We are all different people, but we are relatable. But for you to understand that you got to explore, you got to see like, you know, go everywhere and then you, you got to see. So why is, you know, investing in community is very important to you. Not investing, maybe it might, it might be like investing in money, but mm -hmm. investing in the culture in actually, exp you know, bringing out the best out of that, that culture and creating that content and actually let, letting people know. Yeah, well, community building is the future of, content creation and mm -hmm. my eyes uh, I think in the past you know in the beginning of content creation mm -hmm. it was just sort of like one-off pieces of content mm -hmm. or things that were just would like catch your eye but where we see the content creators that are thriving are the mm -hmm. ones that are actually building communities or tapping into different communities as inspiration. And even mm. when we think about brands too, right? Mm. The brands who are just talking about their products, they don't really resonate the same way that brands mm. who are tapping into community, uplifting mm. and empowering the community mm. are really connecting with people. Um, you mentioned something really interesting about uh, when you were in Uganda, mm. it's about When you, when you tap into different communities, mm. you start to see so much similarities. And I think that's what makes mm. you realize like at the end of the day, we're all human. And we, there's, there's this level of connection, mm. like this base level that we can all connect on. And even when I was in Ghana, mm. I felt like I was in Jamaica. Um, and you know, like yeah. the food was mm. pretty similar. And obviously there, you know, the language is different and you're in a whole different side of the world, mm. but there's this level of humanity that allows you to connect mm -hmm. and that's where great ideas come from. Come from. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like that so much. And uh, one of my biggest thing and what inspired me to be actually like to make game right now, it's, uh, it's, it's the idea of thinking that we can use this medium to be able to build the global communities, you know, to bring people together, you know, and I think that video game are really very powerful tool in that. And, you know, for like telling stories and things like that. So, When it comes to content creators, do we need more people that have empathy when it comes to creating content? Like, I, I, I just, just think about it. Is that something that humanly that is needed whenever when you're creating a content? Yes, I think, I think you definitely need empathy when yeah. creating content um, because that's how, that's what people connect with. Um, I think, you know, 
the type of content that's resonating, especially with Gen Z, is the content that feels more vulnerable. It feels real. It's something that they could relate to. Um, it's funny, I was reading this article and it was talking about how Gen Z now when they're doing tutorials, let's say a makeup tutorial or even they're gaming or something, right? And the conversation that they're actually having is not about the makeup. It's about like mental health. Mental. Yeah, it's about like deeper things that you can actually connect to people on a real level. Um, but they're using the makeup as just like a passion yeah, point yeah. as a way in to the conversation. Um, I forgot. Sorry, I forgot your original question. Oh, empathy, mm -hmm. content creators and empathy. Yeah. And I think it's not only content creators, it's brands, mm -hmm. the brands that have empathy and the brands that realize that they're talking to real people mm -hmm. with real problems and real passions and real lives, right. not just consumers who are buying their products, right? So I think yeah, yeah. I think that's the shift we're gonna see in the next couple of years. I mean, it's already started, mm -hmm. but um, the content creators that have the empathy, that are building community, that are adding value to people's lives, right? right. Whether it be a, a, like an emotional outlet or a form of entertainment, entertainment yeah. or education, um, that's that's the content that's rising to the top because there's so much out there. There's so much yeah, noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like that so much. And I, I, I can see that a lot. I can see that coming, especially when it comes to like, you know, uh, you know, especially even during the election, you know, like content creators were, were really so helpful uh, when it comes to like, you know, social justice, you know, they are, most of them are helpful. I think it's about using the, the platform to be able to like, you know, you know, uh, and I always tell people this, that, we can use our experiences and our past to be able to create a sustainable future for other people. Our experiences, I think that we find every time there are people that are breaking into like thing, difficult things that they, were, they didn't even imagine they would do it one day. And it's because of maybe, you know, their family, some of them are immigrants, some of them like refugees. But now, like, I think more people are becoming like entrepreneurs, more people are becoming like, you know, creating anything that they want. And I think that that's really very important when it comes to like, you know, content creation because we are we are looking back at how we feel how we you know how you know how things happen in our life and when we do that we are creating content so that the, the people that follow us can be able to have a better you know a better communities better understanding of things and i think that do you think that you know it uh using our voice is it's a, it's a very important thing and it's needed right now of course of course mm -hmm. using our voices mm -hmm. um you know Social media, mm. the internet, mm. all that stuff, whatever you want to call oh, it, yeah. is about, it's really about democratization. More people can share their voices. More people mm. can share their stories. You know, mm. before, um, the media was in the hands of very few. Uh, work, with my background in media planning, yeah. I actually learned that, like, a lot of these news channels, mm. a lot of these TV channels are owned by the same, like four people yeah. mm -hmm. um, who are, you know, billionaires, yeah. Yeah. mostly white men, right? Um, mm. So they were technically controlling what was being put mm. out. Right. Um, so now anyone can pick up a smartphone, share their story, post on the internet, share information, mm. and we could take that in. Like this morning I was watching like, random videos on YouTube you. about like financial stuff and taxes and all this stuff, like things we didn't have, things our parents didn't have access to, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I think sharing your story is so important and everyone's story is worth being heard because everyone has learned something along the journey mm -hmm. and it's important to share that. And I think there's this idea that if you're not famous, Mm -hmm. that your story isn't worth being told or people don't care about your story. But I think that's, it's almost the opposite. Like someone who, you know, like someone who came from nothing or, you know, defeated the odds. Like those are the mm -hmm. stories that people want to hear. Those are exactly. the interesting tidbits that people can actually resonate with. Mm -hmm. um, so I definitely think it's really important for people to share their story. That's really amazing. Uh, my 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 last question. I think <laughs> I know I don't want to take much of your time, but I know uh, 
why is time important, especially the time we are in right now, you know, when, you know, we are, we, we still young people, we still like have the energy, you know, to be able to do what we do. And I think that, first of all, before that question is that like, when you look at the time we're in right now, it's a very interesting time, whereby even the, you know, the, even a five year old is, you know, 10 year old is, is, is talking about, you know, I, I, I want, I want, I want to do this for the future for people that are coming and I'm like, you only 10 years. You know, like, why is time really very important to be able to utilize the resources that we are in right now? I am fascinated by the younger generation, mm -hmm. not only Gen Z, but mm -hmm. I guess they're calling Generation Alpha now, yeah. it's like my niece's mm -hmm. generation. Mm -hmm. They are so smart. Like, my niece had an iPad before I did. Okay. Um, and, like, yeah. I just found out she has a TikTok, which is, like, a little bit yeah. alarming, but yeah. whatever. Um I think they're so smart and I think that they they don't they're not growing up with the same boundaries or societal mm. norms that we necessarily grew up with. Yeah. Mm. Like I don't think generation alpha believes that they have to become a doctor to be successful, right? Um and I think that together like the younger generation is going to change the world because we ask the hard questions, we hold people accountable, yeah. mm -hmm. and we're not afraid to speak up. So I think, you know, the younger person, the younger people are really, they're creating the path. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I think that the older people are more mature people um, should actually take a book out of our page, yeah. <laughs> or a page out of our book. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh what what are your top four or three advice that someone could do to become like a, a successful content creator you know having a good empathy and you know having that you know what, what are your like top four yeah <laughs> so the first mm. the first piece of advice i have is um the first piece of advice i have is around creating an idea mm. like every piece of content you have should start with a creative idea um, and a creative idea that connects to people and culture because that's what people resonate with. Uh, the, second piece of, uh, the second piece is around community, which we touched on earlier. Yeah. But if you can really connect with your community, you're going to have so much more impact. Um, and this goes back to what I was saying earlier yeah. about like people think they have to be celebrities to have an impact but actually those micro influencers, those are the people that are really driving conversation, really building community in a meaningful exactly. way. Mm -hmm. um, so if you, you know, you do have like a smaller following, uh, really you know, drive conversation, talk to those people and build your community because that's going to have what, a lot of impact. Uh, the third piece of advice is make sure that your content adds some sort of value to people's lives. Mm -hmm. Like people are spending time interacting with this content. So make sure that it's either educating them, it's inspiring them, mm -hmm. or it has some sort of like emotional relief, whether it's comedy or, you know, like some sort of support mm -hmm. element. And then the fourth, piece of, the fourth piece of advice I have is some advice I actually got uh, right before I started portfolio school. And the advice is learn all the rules and then break them. Wow. Because I see a lot of people, a lot of content creators just doing the same thing over and over and over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, like you see all these trends and these like challenges and like pieces of music yeah. that people mm -hmm. are using and they're just creating the same thing. But you're never going to stand out if you're just like, replicating the same thing. Um, so really leverage your voice, leverage your story, leverage your authenticity to create something new that is going to inspire people and stand out from the crowd. I'm just trying to think of like questions people ask me for tips. Uh, people always ask like how to grow on Instagram. Yeah. And I would say that Reels is definitely can help you grow your platform oh, wow. because it's such a new... Uh, products and 
there's not a lot of people. I wouldn't, I won't say there's not a lot of people. Mm. There's a lot of room for growth in that product. And mm. if you are consistently creating reels mm. and posting it, it could help you grow. But also that's sort of the storytelling um, device of the future, yeah. where it's just like short form video. So if you can master that, whether it be mm. reels or any type of other short form video, I think uh, you'll be set up for the future yeah i try i try recently yeah. i think that that's a very good it's a very good product um yeah i think it's a very good product and uh how do you then like you know how how do you then like you know try to grow your community and then think is it like interacting with people like how do you do that yeah that's a good question uh mm -hmm. so as far as com commun growing your community mm -hmm. i would say the first piece of advice that mm -hmm. you know everyone kind of gives it's mm -hmm. like knowing your niche because okay. mm -hmm. you can't say everything to everyone, everyone. Exactly. right? So yeah. like you want to understand your niche yeah. Yeah. and then speak to that community, create content for that community. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is like actually interacting with people. Yeah. Yeah. I think sometimes people forget like these tools were built to actually spark conversation awesome. and like connect with, uh, with people. Like mm -hmm. we met through uh, Instagram, mm -hmm. you know, like, it's a tool now that you can connect yeah. with people from like other side of the world. So like leverage that tool, actually respond to people, comment back, mm -hmm. respond to your DMs, like communicate with people. And then the other thing is, um, there's a term for it. I'm trying to remember the term is essentially networking across. Okay. So a lot of people try to network up, right? So they're like, mm -hmm. and not saying that that's a bad thing. You can network up. But if you network across your community, mm. that'll also help you build your community. Mm -hmm. Let's say, for example, I'm a beauty content creator and I connect with another beauty content mm -hmm. creator who has a similar following as me. Um, we can now like exchange followers, sure. exchange yeah. audiences, exchange yeah. communities, and now we're both helping each other grow. Wow, that's good. Yeah, I, I was having a conversation about that with... Uh... One of my good friend, uh, uh, Ducky thought, and she like she's, uh, and then I was like, you know, for her, like I was talking about like sustainability, and how you know, like you have a huge community, you know, huge this community, but how do you like, you know, continue to interact, you know, bring some new, you know, maybe new content and thing like that, because that's that's what people want, as like that's your niche, that's why they actually part of your community, that's why they're like they're following you, they want to learn something from you, yeah, and I think learning learning it, it, it it's really very important uh how about like you know having q and a's like those tools like having a live video and things like that uh, are they really very important yeah i mean i think it's you know the q and a's mm. and the live and like the question mm. sticker mm. those are just more opportunities for interaction Excellent. and for people to feel like there's a one-on-one -on -one communication opportunity mm. with you yeah. mm -hmm. so i you know i'm a huge fan of those I personally, I don't really use the live feature that often. Yeah. I'll go yeah. live with like, if it's for work or for like work. Yeah. with someone else. But yeah. um, I've seen people, you know, especially in, in quarantine. I mean, oh, life wow. has like yeah. blown up because <laughs> um, yeah. mm -hmm. people are just in the house. So yeah. yeah, you know, I think the question sticker is such a great tool. Um, and I've seen people do little hacks with it yeah, yeah. where they'll yeah. do like... Um, what are your top like career tips or stuff like that? I mean, just the just the way we have access to people right now is is really it's remarkable. Like, you know, it's this wasn't point. possible ten years yeah, ago, ago, twenty yeah. years ago. Yeah. Wow! Thank you so much. Those are like really, <laughs> those are really amazing, and uh, I've learned so much today. And I'm glad that I asked that question because, like, wow! Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Wow, yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much. This was a great conversation, yeah. Yeah. <laughs>